is ordered to undergo laboratory tests after she is admitted to the hospital for angina. The isoenzyme test that is the most reliable early indicator of myocardial infarction is number one, alanine transaminase, two, lactate dehydrogenase, three, creatinine kinase, MB, four, aspartate transaminase. All right, what do you guys say? What do you guys say? We are talking about a client who is admitted with angina and some laboratory tests are done. Which one out of the four listed do you recognize to be related to myocardial infarction? I love this. We are talking about fundamentals here and recognizing recognizing standard lab values are essential in being a safe nurse. And I see the comments on the screen. Good job. Listen, tag your favorite nurse right now because you're studying. This is an open invite to an NCLEX study session, a free one too, at that. So the correct answer is absolutely number Three, absolutely number three. And most of you guys got this right. You were familiar with this information. Um, the cardiac marker, CPK, especially CPK or CK with the MB attached to it, is cardiospecific. And if a client is having um, a heart attack or a myocardial infarction, you will see changes in this particular cardiac marker in three to six hours. Now they're going to peak in 12 to 18 hours and can stay elevated for up to two days after the infarct has occurred. And so this is really significant because sometimes patients will have a cardiac event earlier in the day and then they don't make it to the hospital until later on. Like they say, well, let me finish this load of laundry or let me go to the grocery store and then I'm gonna go to the hospital, especially women, we do things like that. So um, these laboratory markers are very important. It's important for you to know what they are and actually how long you can expect them to be present in the bloodstream, right? So I wanna go back just to make sure that you guys are aware of these other ones. You didn't pick them and that is great. So the ALT, what kind of, um, what kind of marker or what organ is ALT associated with? What organ is the ALT associated with? I don't want you guys just to get the correct answers and just, just feel confident that you were able to pick from choices. I want you to know um, why you didn't choose the other ones or why the other ones didn't make sense. I got some new nurses in here and we wanna make sure we are all on the same page. Absolutely. So the ALT is associated with the liver. Um, what about the LDH? Where do we see that? What is the importance of the lactate dehydrogenase? The lactate dehydrogenase. That's right. Remar, let me tell you something about Remar. If you are studying and you are in the Remar community, we rarely take days off. So yes, this is a U.S. holiday, but... Our goals, our priorities are more important than holidays. So you can find us here 4th of July. You can find us here Thanksgiving. You can find us here Christmas. We take no days off around here because we're in the world of nursing. I've never had a job that was like, you know what? It's a holiday. All the nurses, y'all go home. Y'all just go home. No, that's not the reality of the situation. This is the reality of the situation. So there are many people who are not studying that should absolutely be studying on today, right? <laughs> All right. So um, LDH is associated with cholesterol, but also to this is an enzyme that is found in body tissues. So it will tell you if you have um, damage in a certain body tissue, all right, as well. So check out LDH lactate dehydrogenase and just take some time to read, read it if you're not too familiar with it. 
Um, and then the aspartase tranaminase is also associated with uh, the liver, the liver, 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 liver. Okay. Perfect. 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 Let us move on to the next question. It is this. A newborn has been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. In discussing the condition and treatment with the family, the nurse should emphasize, number one, they can expect the child will be developmentally delayed. Two, administration of thyroid hormone will prevent problems. Three, this rare problem is always hereditary. Or four, physical growth slash development will be delayed. What do you guys say here? What are we going to um, focus on as the nurse when communicating, communicating these issues? Okay. And, oh, this is so good. I, and I hope you guys are catching it because they gave us the answer inside of the question. And you usually don't see this in NCLEX questions, but the stem of the question directs you exactly to the answer. You guys see that? Does anybody see, see that? Oh, man. I see it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to reveal the right answer. I see a lot of people picking the incorrect answer and that's okay. Because remember, reading is half of the battle. <laughs> reading is half of the battle here. So I'm going to read it again and then I'm going to show you the right answer. So in case you want to change your mind, because that you might want to do that. So a newborn has been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. In discussion, in discussing the condition and treatment with the family, the nurse should emphasize. So we're looking for something that is gonna discuss the condition and the treatment, all right? That is the emphasis. And there's really only one that is going to do that from the choices that were given. And that, do you see that? That is number two, all right? That is number two. That's what the nurse should emphasize to this family. The administration of, of, of thyroid hormone will prevent problems. So it's absolutely number two. We're discussing the condition and the treatment. The others don't address the treatment at all. And so that's why when you, when, when you go and you take the NCLEX, make sure you're taking the correct NCLEX, which is the one in front of you, not the one in your mind. Not the one that you are making up. A lot of nursing students will do that. We just ignore, we ignore what we're being asked and answer what we want. So the correct answer is number two, number number two here. All right, so early identification and con continued treatment with hormone replacement will correct the condition. It will correct the condition. Let's move on to number Question number three, it says this, following a diagnosis of acute glomerulonephritis in their six-year-old child, the parents remark, we just don't know how he caught the disease. The nurse's best response is based on an understanding that, number one, AGN is a streptococcal infection that involves the kidney tubules. Two, the disease is easily transmissible in schools and camps. Three, the illness is usually associated with chronic respiratory infections. Or four, it is not caught but is a response to a previous B hemolytic streptococcal infection. That's a lot, that's a lot here. But we are essentially talking about an acute infection in a six-year-old child and the parents are wanting to know 
how this actually happened. So I do, I wanna see your answers on the screen. I want a thousand comments on this video because you guys are getting ready, getting ready to prepare for your nursing license exam. These are one of the most, coming together and studying, this is the most important activity that you can do because you're, you're evaluating yourself. You're evaluating, you're taking the time to make this a priority. Right now, I know you guys are not watching TV. You're not out there, you know, buying fast food. You're, you're right now, you are applying yourself. You're applying yourself. Okay, all right. The correct answer is, a lot of you got this one right. It is going to be number four. It is going to be number four. All right. And, and this is why, because if you, if you weren't aware of it, if you, did, if you weren't aware, um, acute glomerulonephritis is generally accepted as an immune response, right? So it's an immune complex disease in relation to an antecedent, right, or a previous right? A previous streptococcal infection, usually about a month prior. All right, motorcycle gang. <laughs> All right. Um, four to six weeks prior, the patient will have had a strep infection. And so this is considered um, a non-infectious or you may see non-contagious renal disease. Non-infectious or non-contagious renal disease. Are we all clear on this? If, you, if you're not familiar with it, all you got to do is write it down, put it in your memory, take a screenshot of this, and then later on, just spend about five minutes. That's it. Just five minutes reading about it. And I promise you, the next time you see it, you'll have a reference port point. You'll feel more comfortable on your exam, and you won't feel like, I should have looked at this when I had the opportunity. Take the opportunity and just do it now. Just do it now. All right. Good job, Remar nurses. Good job. Next question is this, we are rolling on over 400 people studying on the 4th of July. Amazing, amazing. Question number four is this, the nurse is assigned to care for clients in the medical surgical unit, included in the plan of care for the immediate post gastro, gastro, help me, gastroscopy, period. Oh my goodness, will be what? So after the client gets this done, what is the most important thing? Okay, all of these things are gonna be important, but what is the most important? Number one, maintain nasogastric tube to continuous suction. Two, assess gag reflex prior to administration of fluids. Three, assess for pain and medicate as ordered. Four, measure abdominal girth every four hours. Okay. And this is the tricky part of NCLEX because the four or five options that you will be presented, they all could be right. They all could, they all could make sense to you. And so now is when you have to come in and you have to prioritize for your nursing exam, which is going to help you pass the, the standard. What is going to help you convince the computer that there is a 95% chance that you will always get these questions correctly when given an opportunity, okay? All right, so... The correct answer here, and I think anytime we're, we're talking about, oh, let me just give you the answer. The correct answer is number two, assess gag reflex prior to the administration of fluids, okay? The client after a gastroscopy has temporary impairment of the gag reflex, okay? And that's due to the anesthetic that they spray in the throat prior to the procedure. And so if the nurse is not aware that you have to check for a gag reflex and you give the patient ice, you give the patient ice, usually it's gonna be ice chips, right? You can cause that patient to aspirate that water where, okay? When we talk about, and this is why 
anytime, honestly, for NCLEX, a patient has a procedure where they have to have an examination down the throat, whether it's an upper GI study or you're getting um, an a EGD and you're going into the top part of the intestines, one of the most important things that the NCLEX exam can ask you is about that gag reflex because you do, you have to essentially paralyze um, the patient in order for them to take this long scope down their throat. You have to paralyze all of those response muscles that will clench up and say, no, nothing is supposed to come down here. Nothing is supposed to come down here but food, right? Because, um, you know, it, it is a very serious issue if your patient aspirates. That's one of the first things we learn in fundamentals. We learn diets and who gets what diet. Because if your patient has difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking like a client would after one of these procedures, then they should not be given food because aspiration goes into the lungs, what you guys are saying. Yeah, aspiration goes into the lungs. And so then you have issues where you have water in the lungs, food particles in the lungs, and that's going to cause uh, inflammation response, a bacterial response. It puts your patient at risk for pneumonia, pneumonia, and nobody wants to deal with that, nobody. So anytime you have a procedure where a patient is getting the scope down their throat, Remember, check the gag reflex. Check the gag reflex, okay? Good job, good job. We are going over fundamentals. We're going over fundamentals. Next question is this. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Which client would require the nurse to be on the highest alert for the development of a pulmonary embolism? Okay, so we know what that is. So what we're looking for is which client is most at risk. Number one, a client who has taken hormonal contraceptives for the past two years. Two, a client who has had laparoscopy gallbladder surgery. Three, a client with arterial vascular disease and difficulty walking or four, a client who has experienced multiple trauma and fractures. What say if you guys here, we're talking about PEs, which are, I don't even have to tell you guys how serious this is for a patient to develop a pulmonary embolism. We saw a lot of these COVID, um, if you know anyone who had COVID, one of the uh, one of the side effects of having COVID was pulmonary embolisms. People would get blood clots in their lungs from the condition. So it was a ton about PEs in the news over the last um, over the last two years, really. All right, and I see our community almost five hundred strong. Wow, we have. We have a consensus. Well, most people are picking between three and four, which I expected. I definitely expect it. And one of them is just a response that is based on association and not really on this question here. All right. So the correct answer is number, the correct answer is number four, but I understand why you picked number three. I understand why you picked number three, but the correct answer is actually number four. And that is because um, the client with trauma, okay? And this is uh, a trauma of multiple locations, right? So this client has multiple traumas and they have multiple orthopedic injuries. So bone, right? Bone breaking. Um, what I don't, it doesn't even say, but the traumas put this patient at an increased risk for developing pulmonary embolisms. And this is why, because the injuries that this patient has may predispose the client to fat emboli and bony fragments that can become emboli. And uh, essentially, if a patient is 
is not um, in the ICU with multiple traumas and, and multiple fractures, what is that going to speak to their mobility? All right. And, and this is because a lot of you guys pick number three and you pick the person with arterial vascular disease and difficulty walking. Right. But at least they are up walking. All right. And so if we're looking at between three and four, who who is going to um, who is going to be most at risk for this P.E.? for this traveling blood clot. And yes, of course, um, you know, we, we saw three and we said, okay, difficulty walking, that may lead to blood clots. And so we just trigger response. Sometimes that's how we are. Uh, you know, being in nursing school is a traumatic event. And sometimes we just jump to associations because that's what worked for us in nursing school. The teachers who wrote the exam, they wrote them pretty, you know, it was, it was pretty simple compared to NCLEX. And we we wanted you in nursing school to learn word associations. So yes, immobility, blood clot, pregnancy, um, uh, hyperemesis gravidarum, you know? And so we, we, we learned that way in nursing school, but for your licensure exam, you kind of got to really marinate the top. Like you got to really sit with these choices in your mind. You really can't just jump to conclusions all the time. Right. So um, the, the client who has these multiple traumas, they are going to be immobile for a longer period of time, too, if that's what you were looking at, if that's what you were going for. And so the injuries compound the client's risk. But hey, listen, the most important part of today is that you came here and you learned something. All right. You came here and you learned something. And so. I, I'm happy if you guys got three out of five right, four out of five right. Even though these were fundamentals, you may not have seen them in a long time. I am super proud of those of you who are testing and passing this week. I want you to congratulate Nurse Tiffany. She actually passed NCLEX this month. She passed NCLEX this month. And what I love is that she studied my program in three weeks and was able to pass on her first try. So I don't know if she just was like, I just got to get this and I got to go through it. But whatever she did, it worked for her. And she's here to tell you all about it. Let me do it this way. I want to get her in. Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany and I am a Remar nurse. I took my NCLEX on June 15th and I passed on the first try. I ordered the VT and took it in three weeks. I did the course in three weeks because I had already had my date set. And you know, this book and this, the quick facts, this stuff is the truth, y'all. I had a baby the last four months of nursing school and I was a little worried when I returned back to school from maternity leave because I was like, feeling like I couldn't remember many things. and. You know, I would just say that while taking my test, I just was thanking God that I did the VT because there were things that I probably would not have remembered or been able to really critically think about had I not taken the course. So, you know, for those out there who need some extra encouragement, just take it from me. Like, this is everything and I'm so grateful. And and the my favorite part, my favorite part about this is that the Remar team is faith-based. That means a lot to me. And it helps to reinforce and keep me encouraged with, you know, just the thought of, you know, with God, everything is possible. And that, that is so true. That is so true. So just continue to stay focused out there, y'all. Get the VT. Get the VT. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to do it. So I hope this helps somebody. I hope this encourages somebody because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Remar. Hey, you might get banged up a little bit, but I promise you, if you keep doing something, you will be good at it. You think when you become a nurse that that first week is not going to be like, what did I get myself into? You absolutely are going to get bruised up along the way, but not only you can, you will, you must pass NCLEX. You can, you will, you must be a great nurse. And however I can help you get there, I want to help you. And, and for somebody, just hearing those words that I spoke is going to get you there. Great achievement is usually born of great sacrifice. You can't be selfish. 
You cannot be selfish. And so if you want to study some more tonight and you want to set time out on your schedule, I have a, a, a something for you to do. We're going to be going over pharmacology. I'm going to be talking about how the NCLEX is changing for next generation NCLEX. And that happens tonight at 8 p.m. Also, I have a full week of things for you to do. We are going to be doing um, game night tomorrow night, Tuesday. We'll be doing that at 8 p.m. And then our winning Wednesdays are just as great, okay? Just as great. And those will begin at 9 o'clock. Those will begin at 9 o'clock. So this is your opportunity for a full week of just dedication, all right. So I'm glad you guys will say I'm going to be there. I'm going to check it out. Also, the NCLEX virtual trainer right now, this is where you can continue your studying with me. If you want to go over um, levels of prevention, you're just getting your virtual trainer. Click on the tab that says training center and it will take you to your NCLEX review, whether you're an RN or a PN. And so what I want to do right now, and I, I hope by God's grace, you guys can hear this. I wanted to play one of the videos from the virtual trainer for you to just experience what the information is like. And so which video do I wanna do? Let me do, I'm gonna try to pick one that's not too, too long for you guys, but that will be helpful to you. So let's do intravenous therapy. All right, video from the virtual trainer. Let's talk about some IV therapy registered nurses. Mm, IV therapy, super popular, super common because it has many uses. IV therapy is used to provide fluids, nutrition, and medications, all things you will find very common in the hospital environment. Now, there are devices that you need to know that are used to give IV route things, such as number one, a peripheral catheter, and two, a central line. Now, when I was a new nurse, I really didn't understand the difference between these two, but I find now that actually they're quite similar. A peripheral catheter is essentially a short catheter that is inserted into a peripheral vein. And when I say peripheral, I mean anywhere that's not in the chest or the abdomen, right? So anywhere that's not in the chest or the abdomen is considered your periphery. A central line is a longer catheter that is inserted centrally in a vein, right, in the body. Now, because it's a central catheter, then you know that that vein is in the chest area. So that's the difference, really. The peripheral catheter is going to be shorter and it's going to be um, on the periphery or outside of the chest area. The central line is located centrally in the chest area. So now you know <laughs> more than I did when I was a new nurse. Let's talk about peripheral catheters. Peripheral catheter cannulas have sizes. And those sizes are according to numbers. So actually, the smaller the number, the larger the cannula size. Your IV tubing care for NCLEX, we're changing all IV tubing within 72 hours, okay? So this is according to your hospital policy, but for the majority, of standards, that IV tubing should be changed within 72 hours. Now, IV tubing for blood needs to be changed every 24 hours. And IV tubing for TPN needs to be changed every 24 hours as well. The major IV complications. Let's look at the complications the signs, and then your nursing interventions, your responsibility when they happen. 
So the first complication is infiltration. You may be familiar with it. Let me tell you the signs when an IV becomes infiltrated. What you're going to notice first is swelling. It is going to be a very puffy, swollen IV site. And that's because the fluid is actually leaking outside of the vessel. So the fluid is building up in the tissue surrounding the vein. So not only will you see swelling, but you're also going to feel a very cool, a very cool area because the IV fluid is going to be a lot cooler than normal body temperature. There will also be paler as well at the site. So when infiltration happens, what are the steps for the nurse to take? And this is a perfect drag and drop NCLEX question. So what you do, number one, is you stop the infusion immediately because those IV fluids, that medication, is not getting to the proper place. So you turn the infusion off. Secondly, you're going to remove that IV catheter. You need to take it out. Third, you want to elevate the extremity. Elevate the extremity. And this is going to help with absorption of the IV fluids. Now, there comes a point where you can use ice or you can use a warm compress. So number four, I want you to write this down. Ice, if it happened less than 30 minutes ago. So ice is a very quick response. Ice is a very quick response. If it happened less than 30 minutes ago, you use ice. Now, number five, you use a warm compress if it happened more than 30 minutes ago. A warm compress if it happened more than 30 minutes ago. Six, we are going to notify the healthcare provider. Seven, restart that IV. And then eight, we're going to document everything that was done. And the reason why we want to notify the healthcare provider, because he or she may determine that enough IV fluids were administered or maybe central line may be a better option for the client. So we want to let the doctor know that it happened and then restart the IV and then document. Okay, the next IV complication is phlebitis. Phlebitis presents a little differently than your infiltration. You're going to see redness at the IV site. There will be a warm feeling there instead of a coolness. You can actually see red streaks along the vein and the patient will have pain. They will report pain at this IV site. So what do we do for phlebitis? It's kind of the same thing. We're going to number one, stop that IV infusion. Two, remove that IV catheter. Three, elevate the extremity. Four, we want to use ice for phlebitis, right? Five, we want to notify the healthcare provider. Then six, restart that IV in a different location and then document, all right? So just to be clear, again, when you restart the IV, you do not use the same vein for phlebitis or infiltration. Put it in a different area, um, maybe even the opposite limb, okay? All right. The NCLEX emergency. The NCLEX emergency regarding your IV site is air embolism. Now, air embolism, much more common with central lines as opposed to peripheral lines, but we need to know uh, the signs and the nursing interventions. So the signs of a patient has an air embolism, you're going to notice um, some vital sign changes. They will have a weak, thready pulse, okay? And it's going to be rapid, but it's going to be very weak. Also, there will be a sudden drop in the blood pressure. The patient will complain of chest pain, and you will see some cyanosis in that patient. If an air embolism is suspected, you have to act quickly for an NCLEX. 
you need to know these steps. Number one, before you call anyone, there's always something you can do for your patient. So for in this case, we're going to put the patient on the left side with their feet elevated. And this will help prevent that air from traveling to the right side of the heart. The second thing we want to do is put oxygen on the patient. You can do this in an emergency situation because an air embolism can be fatal. And to cover this, healthcare providers will write a PRN order or as needed order for oxygen if a patient has a central line. Remember, this is NCLEX, it's a perfect world. Um, you have everything that you need in order to practice safely. The third thing is to notify that healthcare provider and let them know what is happening so that they can give you orders to help protect your client. Okay, let's do some critical thinking questions. You can pause the video if you want to think ahead of time or I'm gonna get started right now. A client presents to the emergency room after a hit and run accident. The client has sustained massive trauma and is in a hypotensive crisis. Which of the following intravenous cannulas will be most beneficial for fluid resuscitation? Number one, 22 gauge. Two, 20 gauge. Three, 18 gauge. Or four, 14 gauge. What do you think? The correct answer is number four, 14 gauge. Remember I told you the smaller the gauge, the larger the cannula. And for trauma patients, we would want them to get their IV fluids, their blood as quickly as possible. So a larger cannula will allow us to deliver the fluids at a faster rate. All right, how was that for your IV therapy overview. We got to keep going. You guys are doing some great work. Let me say this again. You can, you will, you must pass in clicks. Okay, so that was definitely a preview into the NCLEX virtual trainer. And I saw that you guys had some questions about the virtual trainer as you were just watching the video. So I do want to address those questions that I saw. And if you guys have others, I'm going to be talking about the virtual trainer too. I just want to take some time to help you guys to understand what the virtual trainer is because it is really different from anything that you've ever seen before. And again, this week, um, this week is the last week that we are doing the virtual trainer. This is the last week we're doing the VT uh, sale where we're doing 65% off of that program. All right. And so that is my full NCLEX review with the books. So the question I saw was what subjects do I go over in the virtual trainer? I go over everything that I think is important for you to know for your exam. So for example, we did IV fluids there. It is important for you to know the different types of IV fluid and how they help your patient get better. And then also I go over pregnancy, I go over um, infant heart defects, I go over delegation and assignment, prioritization, mental health issues, endocrine issues, uh, so many things. It is a full NCLEX review. So that's what you can expect. Lectures just like that on all the important subjects. Somebody said, do you have to do the books along with the videos? And my answer is, I didn't create the books for nothing. Like there is a real, real connection to you writing down the information that I talk about and you remembering it better, quicker, faster. So yeah, can you just listen to the lectures? You absolutely can just listen to them. But if you're like me and you remember things that you write down, um, then the books app absolutely will give you an advantage. And the goal is for you to learn the quickest and easiest way possible so that you can pass the exam. That's the goal when you are doing my program. Um, because there, there are a lot of programs that just give you questions. And there are a lot of programs that just give you like um, 
what is it, these PowerPoint slides and you just have to read through PowerPoint slides. And that may work for some people, but for me and how I like to learn, I like to hear it. I like to see it. I like to write it down and it stays with me longer. So um, that's the reason for the books, the physical books. Another question is um, the shipping. <laughs> so the shipping of the books. You will get books physically shipped to you, but you will automatically get um, access to the virtual trainer. So that means that like right away when you sign up for the virtual trainer, you will immediately begin to be able to go to your training center. You will be able to print out your study calendar. If you click on um, the file vault, if you click on your file vault and go to your calendar, you are able to get the, the RN or the PN calendar right away. You'll be able to get that calendar and you will be able to start looking at what you need to do for week one, all right? And so this is going to help a lot of you save so much time, right? Save so much time on figuring out what you need to be doing, what you need to be doing. And I, I, um, I like that I don't have you guys studying on Saturdays or Sundays. So you are taking the weekends off so that you're able to study. Now, the nurse that we spotlighted today, she did my six week program in three weeks. She probably did it because during the week she didn't take the rest days. Uh, she just probably continued to study and maybe she was studying on the weekends. So I, I, I say, make this program your own. When you get your study calendar, you can make it your own. There are other great things inside of your file vault as well that I don't want you to skip out on, which are the drug cards um, that I have in here for you guys. You're able to study those drug cards and they help you if you need to have some quick, quick information or if you want to print these out. Again, these are all of the resources that are inside of your virtual trainer that I don't I don't know if you guys um, you know know that they're there to help you. Another thing I want to show you is that inside of your virtual trainer, if you go to your training center, we do have still, we do still have Monday motivation. We still have Let's Talk NCLEX. And these help you as well when you don't feel like studying to get going. Let's see how the videos are in the virtual trainer. Yes. So I'm going to play um, another, all right, another video from the virtual trainer so that you guys can see. I'm going to pick another short one so that you guys can see how again, you are going to be learning, you're going to be learning your information and taking taking action to getting your NCLEX um, information down. And of course, yes, you do have homework and you do have um, progress exams, lots of NCLEX questions inside of your virtual trainer. Let me see how long the normal and high risk newborn video is. Let's get into the normal and high risk newborns. If you love babies, you will love this section. They are so super cute just watching them. You have to know that APGAR score, and that is a scale that you must memorize before you take your NCLEX exam. Remember, the APGAR score is done at one in five minutes after birth. There are five categories, heart rate, respirations, muscle, tone, appearance, and reflex. Each category a baby can get from a zero to a score of two. So let's go through the categories and look at the characteristics that would give a baby a zero, a one, or a two. If we're talking about heart rate, a score of zero is given if the heart rate is absent. A score of one would be given if the heart rate was below 100 and a score of two would be given if the heart rate was at or above 100. So guys, if NCLEX gives you a heart rate of 100, you're gonna score that baby at what number? Two, right? Respirations, a zero if there are no respirations, if the respirations are absent. 
a one if the baby has weak gas and a two if the baby has a good strong cry. The muscle tone of the baby, a zero would be if the baby was flaccid. Flaccid is a term that means very limp, very loose. A score of one would be given if there was some flexion in the baby's muscles. So perhaps the legs are really flexed, but the arms are limp and flaccid. And a two, if the baby is well flexed, pulled in tight, that's what you would give the baby. Appearance or color, a score of zero would be given if the baby was cyanotic. A score of one, if the body was normal, but the extremities were blue, and a score of two, if the body and the extremities were a normal color. Reflex or irritability, the scores are a zero if there is no response. A score of one if there is a grimace or facial change, and a score of two if the baby has good reflexes. If you think about the score at one minute or five minutes, I want you to remember the score at five minutes is more valuable. In the eyes of the newborn, all newborns will get that erythromycin ointment and they may not be happy about it, but it is for their good because the eyes need to be protected if they've gone through the vaginal birth canal and the mother has had some STDs. The temperature of the newborn, the first temperature should be 98.6 degrees. Babies do have a hard time staying warm, so we have to be mindful to make sure that their temperature stays normal. The pulse normally is 120 to 160, and the respirations are 30 to 60. Hey, in the abdomen, there are three umbilical vessels. You need to know how many arteries and how many veins. Do you remember? It's one vein and two arteries. I like to use the mnemonic device AVA. AVA stands for artery, vein, artery. And then I don't forget that. Let's go over some cord care client education for our registered nurses. This is what we tell those clients. When it comes to the umbilical cord that has been cut, we need to allow that cord to air dry. It should not be washed daily. Mm -mm. By the seventh day, the cord should actually have fallen off. But during this time, we need to monitor for signs of infection of that umbilical stump. And what we would notice would be localized redness or tenderness, or maybe even some pus coming from the area. We would tell the client to definitely notify the pediatrician or healthcare provider at that time. Now, the high-risk newborn is number one, the drug-addicted newborn. And the drug-addicted newborn was the baby that was given illegal substances during pregnancy. Let's talk about what that baby will look like and behave like. The nurse would notice a high-pitched cry, poor sucking ability, which means these babies will have a difficult time eating. They will be irritable and they will have higher than normal vital signs, such as their temperature, their heart rate, their respirations. Here is a critical thinking question. What is the best way to test for illegal drugs in infants? What do you think the best way? I hear your minds turning. I hear you. I hear you. The best way is to do a urine drug screen. Yeah. The nursing care for the drug addicted newborn is what we call cluster care. And that means focusing on doing the treatments all at one time and the cluster care is really, it's a supportive care measure. There, there are not a lot of 
treatments or interventions that are done to the drug addicted newborn. Sadly, they have to go through withdrawal to get those illegal substances completely out of their system. But there are some things that you can do to help, such as turning the baby on the right side lying position, elevating the head of the bed, not handling them so much. So decreasing the amount of touching and stimulus that they have. And it's also okay to give a pacifier or a soother to comfort these babies. Let's go over the interventions for the mother who has HIV that just delivered a baby. The first point that I wanna talk about is the isolation required. What isolation is required for the HIV mother? What do you guys say? It is going to be universal or standard precautions, okay? The second point, do you think you can give the baby the mother's breast milk? No, the mother is not able to breastfeed because the HIV virus can be transmitted through breast milk. Third point, can the baby stay in the mother's room? What do you think? Yes, the baby can stay in the mom's room. We also teach the mother, do not give the baby live vaccinations until after the baby has been confirmed as not having HIV. And if you guys remember, this can take up to 18 months. So if we're teaching the mom not to give live vaccinations, what do you think some examples of live vaccinations are? Let me give you a clue. Some of them are MMR, varicella, and oral polio. Whenever I'm teaching in class, I hear students yell out the flu shot. The flu vaccine influenza is not live, okay? Can you give the vitamin K shot? That is the final point. What say if you guys, yes or no, vitamin K? Is it gonna be helpful to the baby? Absolutely, because the vitamin K is gonna help the blood to do what? It's going to help the blood to clot. Now, remember this safety point for NCLEX. Clients with HIV can never donate blood. Never, never, never at any point, even if they have been receiving treatment. I want to talk about two more conditions that will make a newborn high risk. And the next one is fetal alcohol syndrome. When you think about a baby who was given alcohol during gestation, they are going to have certain characteristics. The first is that they are going to have a low birth weight. These babies are gonna be smaller than normal. They are typically going to have some facial features that are different as well. They will have a flat nose, small eyes, and thin lips. There is a risk for mental retardation, which of course is a cognitive impairment. When you think about the treatment for fetal alcohol syndrome, I want you to know for babies, the treatment is essentially, they have to go through withdrawal. Mm -hmm. But one thing about babies that are born with fetal alcohol syndrome is that they actually like to be held. So they receive comfort if nurses or their parents are holding them. The next high-risk newborn that I wanna talk about is the baby born with spina bifida. Yes, spina bifida is a known neural tube defect that has an unknown cause. You know, most mothers who have babies with folic acid deficiency will have issues like spina bifida. So that's why it's very important for moms to take folic acid when they're considering becoming pregnant or they are actually pregnant. Because with spina bifida, the spinal column is partially exposed, we need to watch for fluid buildup problems. 
yes, the circulation is not 100%, as you can imagine. The treatment for spina bifida is shunt placement to drain the fluid. Also, surgery may be required for the infant. The problem is that when babies are born, they are not prepared to undergo surgical procedures. So they need to be nourished and they need to grow first. Now, a major safety point for NCLEX is the position of a baby with spina bifida because there is an exposed spinal column with a pouch or a sack on the back of the baby. We need to keep these babies in the prone position. That is right. These babies need to stay on their stomach to protect that sack. Now, this is a big challenge because babies do not like to be on their stomachs. They like to be on their backs. So a baby with spina bifida who is placed on the stomach, are they going to want to eat? Probably not. So it'll be a challenge for the nursing staff and the parents to make sure that this baby gets adequate nutrition. Those are the top NCLEX points for spina bifida. One more that I wanna talk about is the baby born with cleft lip and cleft palate. Now, this is most commonly seen in Caucasian babies and males. The treatment is a chiloplasty or a palatoplasty where there is actually a surgical correction of the deformities. The client education for the parents is when feeding, do not use straws for this baby. I know it seems like a good option if you see it on NCLEX, but the correct answer will be to use a regular nipple with a larger hole placed in it. Because these two deformities require surgical correction, an elbow restraint or a Logan bow may be used after the surgery so that the baby does not alter any of the sutures. An NCLEX tip for these babies are that nutrition is going to be a major concern for both of these birth defects. So those were my NCLEX points about the normal and high-risk newborn. The next topic will be infant heart defects and you're gonna want to stick around for this. Cool, you guys are asking me some amazing questions. I guess just showing you the virtual trainer, you guys are asking me some amazing questions about the virtual trainer. So I'm writing them the down as they come in. Said, uh, uh, one of the first questions that I saw was, if we categorize them, how long do you get in the virtual trainer? And then what so happens like after the initial and period? Two types so of different babies. you get- We're gonna look at the blue baby and we're gonna look at And I may even have to play another baby. BT video, let me see. Um, so you get three months access in the virtual trainer. And right now, because we are doing the $200 off of the virtual trainer, that takes the price to $169. And so with that, if you think about 90 days in the virtual trainer, that is $1.80 a day. That's it. It's $1.80 a day for three months. Now, my program is only about one month long. So you're getting two additional months to take your time to watch the videos again. If you want to watch them on repeat, you're taking your time to do that. Plus, 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 if you want additional time in the virtual trainer, you pay the monthly renewal fee. Now the monthly renewal fee is $50 per month after you get three months already. And the reason why I'm going over this right now is because if you get in the virtual trainer for $169, even if you had to pay $50 for an additional month, it's still cheaper. That only comes to $219. That's still cheaper than when we take this program off of sale and it goes back to the original price. Okay, so this is the time to get in the virtual trainer if you are ready to make that full, full commitment to preparing for your nursing license exam. This is absolutely, absolutely the time to do it. And of course, it's all about content. Content is key. And there's such a big difference 
when you're studying the content as opposed to just doing questions because you're literally you are literally starting from the top all the way through reviewing the most important points not missing important details that NCLEX will ask you and I tell you students they feel so much better after listening to my lecture on um, psychiatric medications than if they had done a hundred questions on psychiatric medications you just get so much more when you do it so um, what about the student workbook that's the newest question so yeah so the student workbook is a function it I'm going to ship the book to you so when you get the virtual trainer, you can begin watching videos immediately. You can do some practice exams. We have this section. Let me show you guys. So if you go to, let me go to return the courses. If you go to this here, it's called before the books arrive. And this is the section that you can do while you wait for your um, books to come. All right. And this is what you can do. All right. And so again the workbook is going to be the place where you take notes while you're watching the video and this is also the place where you're going to be able to find all of your homework and your practice exams so that's the function of the workbook you're going to be writing all the information that i'm saying to you you don't have to just hold it in your mind you can write it down and then when you're not in front of the computer or you don't want to watch it on your cell phone you can always take the book and the book is literally this big it's it's not much bigger than quick facts. So this is something that I can stick in my purse and study with me. Another question that I got was about the price. So again, it's on sale right now. The price is down to $169 for the entire program. And if you don't want to if you if you don't want to pay the $169 without trying it, we do have a free trial for the Inclex virtual trainer. And you can test it out for three days to see if you like it before you make that commitment. So that's another great thing. You can go to remarnurse.com forward slash free and take a free trial of the virtual trainer. Okay. Um, somebody asked about the ATI exit exam for nursing school. You can use my program for the ATI exit exam. Actually, the schools that I work with, they love when I come in and the students get access to the virtual trainer before doing their exit exam because it's like a review of all the important concepts of nursing so if you're taking an ati exit exam the the virtual trainer will help you all right because ati tries to um focus in on the same points as the nclex exam right and so whatever students didn't learn in nursing school ati um exam may be a little bit challenging so if you take my NCLEX review before the ATI exit exam, you will feel much more confident on that exam. Okay, um, somebody says, I don't care about the price. I care about the knowledge. I hear you. That's what, and, and, and that's what you have to really look at it as, as an investment. Just like, you know, you pay for nursing school um, or, or just like not even nursing school, even doctors, uh, you know, or lawyers, after they pay thousands of dollars to go through law school they have to take the bar exam before they can actually practice as a lawyer and these people have no problems investing in that bar exam review the mcat the mcat exam review people understand that the value of saving time and saving money by getting knowledge faster and so sometimes for nursing school you know when we already know that nursing school is extremely fast we try to learn information and then you got to kind of dump it to learn new information when it comes to your licensure exam taking an NCLEX review makes uh, makes you more prepared just period okay um and somebody says what is this yes can I subscribe to for one month you can renew for a month but you can't initially subscribe for a month all right because the program is initially built out for six weeks and so i give you six weeks plus additional time just in case it may take you you know an additional you know week or two to get through some information or i'm 
this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes nursing students learn more than they remember learning in nursing school. So they like to sit with the information a lot more. So, um, so that is the reason why it's three months initially, and then every renewal is one month after that. Okay. All right. Um, do I have one for a nurse practitioner? I don't have one for a nurse practitioner yet, but I've been asked several, several times. Um, and so I am looking into the future uh, for that. Um, are there any, okay, the NCLEX review on BT, are they different from that in Quick Facts? That's a great question. So Quick Facts for NCLEX. Okay, so this is, um, this is the Quick Facts for NCLEX. This is the original version. This is not the five-star edition. However, I can make this illustration with this. So you have your Quick Facts for NCLEX, which is a book that I sell on the website and on Amazon. And there are certain topics in the Quick Facts, which are great. You know, people love Quick Facts because you go over a lot of content. So like all of these topics, you can't really sell. All of these topics are in Quick Facts. When I created this book, it was only half of my program. So there has always been a workbook that has totally different subjects than the quick facts. These are two completely separate books. You are um, not going to find the same information in both of these. So yes, quick facts goes over content. It has the pharmacology section. It has clinical skills. But if you only have quick facts, you're still responsible for all of this information. And this is where I go over, um, this is where I go over all of your age specific nursing care, prioritization, disaster management, infection control, safety, psychiatric medication, psychiatric illnesses, um, clinical math, did I say that? Uh, substance abuse, pain management, IV fluids, orthopedics. These are all in here that your quick facts is not going to have. And so the reason why is because this book comes with actual lectures. Uh, it is very important for me to lecture on heart defects or substance abuse as opposed to you just reading it. You learn a lot faster. So if you only have the quick facts book, you still need to learn all this information from somewhere. My thing is just learn it from me. Get the full package and let me teach you all aspects um, so that you are more prepared. Okay. Um, that is that. And this is absolutely, um, this is, this is for repeat test takers, international nurses, for sure. This is the program for you guys. I also welcome new graduates to the NCLEX virtual trainer because you are able to um, review some of the things that you're seeing in nursing school. And it already feels like nursing school because you have lectures and then you have the program. What is the difference I'm looking for? I have all these books and I'm looking for, I think I took my quick facts, the five-star version out. Um, so the original quick facts had to be upgraded because there were changes to the NCLEX exam that I had to accommodate for. So for example, if you just have this original book, then you will have the generic and the trade names in this book. The NCLEX only tests on the generic names. So I took all of that out um, of the updated version. Also, this original version does not have a clinical skills section. This original version does not have a study calendar with it. There were 20 new topics added that this original version doesn't have. So I have this is just, you know, this is one of my books that I have historically, but the five star edition is going to be um, much better. As I try to put this in here with one hand. Mark, can you help me, Mark? I can't get it in here. <laughs> so I'll just leave it. All right. So that's the difference. Um can somebody split the cost and log in together? Um, well, the, the trouble with that is that you're only going to get one set of books. And then also when you take your exams, you guys will only, I don't know, you have to figure out how you would share the exam. Um, and then also the system tracks the IP locations of the, um, of the users. So, 
yeah. If you are found to be sharing accounts, then the virtual trainer can shut your access down without having to give you any money back or do any remediation for it because it's supposed to be one student, one account. All right. Um, what's your what's your advice in regards to memorizing the material? OK, remembering the material. So my advice for remembering the information that you give that I give you in the virtual trainer is to literally consider the study calendar, because when you sit down and only do a certain amount of tasks per day, you're going to accomplish more. I do not recommend trying to cram all this information in. It's going to be really challenging no matter how simple I make it. The videos are approximately 10 minutes. And so if you can just dedicate two to three hours a day, you're going to get through the program already very quickly and very efficiently. So make use of the study calendar. That's what I'll say. Um, okay. If you, when you get your package, you can have the option to get it with or without the quick facts. Cause some of you already have quick facts and you want to just get the program now, which you would get for a lower price. Um, make sure if you need the quick facts, you get the full option. All right. As opposed to just getting the, um, the package without the quick facts. Let me see if I can, um, let me see if I can show you guys how to get there. Let me see. So here's my computer screen. If you go to remarnurse.com, you're going to come to my website and this is where you get this is where you get the virtual trainer from. Okay, so this is my website. Only buy my official products from me, all right? Um, so if you go to Inclex virtual trainer, you have two options. You can renew your virtual trainer or you can sign up for your virtual trainer. If you hit sign up, you're going to see that right now there are four days left to the sale and you don't have to use any kind of coupon code or anything like that. This is what you're going to do. Even if you have the quick facts already, pay attention to this. Make sure that if you're a registered nurse or a practical nurse, you go to your correct program because there are two different programs for registered nurse and practical nurse. So let's just say you are a registered nurse and you click on enroll now. Okay. Um, when you click on enroll now, you're going to have options. And this is where people, um, I think, get confused. So you're going to have your three month subscription. And this is what you want if you need both books and the online program. This is what you would click. If you need both books and the online program, you're going to click this. The next option is a three month program for a nurse who is outside of the US. And that is your international nurse. If you are in, if you are currently living in Canada, if you are currently living in the Philippines, if you are currently living in Dubai, or if you're currently living in, uh, where else do we go? Haiti, Russia, um, where, uh, wherever, anywhere else, it does not matter. This is the package that you will put because you need international shipping. Okay. Now, for those of you who already have the quick facts book and you are living in the United States, you need the three month program minus quick facts. All right. And so when you scroll down, you'll see that's going to take the price to $149. You only see 161 because that's shipping added to it, but you will actually get the program for less than the sale price. If you already have your quick facts book. All right. Um, and then some of you internationally, Jamaica, for example, right? If you were in Jamaica, you would pick the three month international uh, shipment full program. All right. Any other countries, let me know. I'll shout you out. Now, some of you guys who are international and you already have the quick facts too, if you already have the quick facts book, you're going to be looking at one of the minus quick facts books options, because that means we don't need to send it to you. 
So either you're going to be a U.S. nurse, all right, or you're going to be living outside of the U.S., but you still want the full program. So if you're in the Dominican if you're in the Dominican Republic, you will get the international shipment full, okay? And we'll ship that to you, all right? Unless you already have Quick Facts and you don't need the Quick Facts book, then you would just get the three-month um, international shipment minus Quick Facts, okay? But if you're in Florida, if you're in Chicago, if you are in, um, you know, Tennessee or Texas, you're going to be getting the R, the RN subscription program. All right. That's going to be for you. Ghana in the building. Absolutely. International nurse, international shipment. If you're in Ghana, um, you can, if you have a smart TV, you can also log into your virtual trainer from your smart TV, your um, laptop, your tablet, your cell phone, all of those things. Anywhere you can get on the internet, you can get on the virtual trainer. That's why this was a program. That's why this is a program that I transitioned to um, because we had so many nurses. Yes, Guyana. We had so many nurses. And you guys remember before this, I did the DVD program and I was literally sending out DVDs. Well, we had a lot of issues with our international nurses, people not having DVD players. So we went to the virtual study system. So if you can get on the internet, you can study with me. All right. So again, this is the program. Thank you guys for, uh, for spending so much time uh, with me today. Uh, I think before I leave, somebody says iPhone works wonderfully. Yes. So before I leave, um, I will play one more video and then I will be out. And again, this is just to show you guys the difference between studying with just a question bank as opposed to really going over the content, particularly if you've been out of school for a long time. Yeah, you've been out of school for a long time and you need to review this information because this is the information that will be on your your exam. So we're going to hit the virtual trainer. It will populate all of the videos that we um, that we have and let us do um, antibiotics. Somebody wanted to do pharmacology. I'm going to play the antibiotics one. We are going to get into some pharmacology now. The more we study together, the more I will introduce pharmacology to you all. We are starting with antibiotics, and I want to look at three major classes of antibiotics that will be helpful for you throughout this review. So we're going to talk about aminoglycosides. We're going to look at some examples, how they help, and how they harm. And this is kind of the scope of thinking that I want you to have when you are reviewing pharmacology. So aminoglycosides, can you think of some examples of aminoglycosides? If you can, go ahead and write them down. If you need help, let me tell you some examples. Clindamycin, gentamicin, streptomycin, azithromycin. So now that I probably said them, you were like, oh, those are aminoglycosides? Yes, aminoglycosides end in the mycin, the mycin. There is one, vancomycin, that is always put in the aminoglycoside group. However, it's not an aminoglycoside. Vancomycin is not an aminoglycoside. It's a macrolide, but it's usually grouped with aminoglycosides because it has similar side effects. So make a note of that. Now, how they help your patient. Aminoglycosides are very powerful antibiotics. So they treat big infections such as meningitis, infective endocarditis, or infections of the heart, and also septicemia. What's septicemia? 
Septicemia is an infection in your blood. So again, these antibiotics are for serious kinds of infections. Now, this is the NCLEX point that you want to know. Aminoglycosides can be ototoxic. What does ototoxicity mean? It means it causes damage to your ears. Yes. So clients who take aminoglycosides may have hearing loss. They may have tinnitus, right? Aminoglycosides, not only are they ototoxic, but they are also nephrotoxic. And nephrotoxic leads you to the what organs? The kidneys. Yes, aminoglycosides cause kidney damage. So in order to know what's going on with your client, there is a lab value that you have to draw. There's actually two. They are called the peak and trough. Have you ever heard of these before? The peak and trough. The peak and trough, they are important because they're used to determine the concentration of a drug in the body. So this will help to see if a medication is reaching a toxic range. So for the peak and for the trough, I'm just gonna tell you when to gather them. So the peak, you get the peak of a medication an hour after it has been given. Now, this is if it has been given PO. This is if it's been given PO. Then you draw the peak one hour after. Now, if the medication was given IV, then you get the peak 30 minutes after you give it. Now, for the trough, the peak tells you the highest amount of drug in the body. The trough, you're looking for the what? The lowest. So normally, you get the trough immediately before the medication is due. Because at that point, then the medication is leaving the patient's body. So normally, people say about five to 10 minutes before the next dose is due. So you want to have everything ready so that you get your trough right before that medication is due. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, here is a question for you about aminoglycosides. What is the antidote if a patient has too much clindamycin or gentamicin in their body, we need to give them a medication. The antidote is going to be calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate. All right. Now, can you give this during pregnancy? Can you give aminoglycosides during pregnancy? Yes or no? What do you say? The correct answer is no, you cannot give aminoglycosides during pregnancy, all right? It will cause harm to that baby. All right, let's move on to the next medication. Okay, so the next antibiotic we're gonna talk about is penicillin. Most people are familiar with examples of penicillin. I'm just gonna tell you a few. They are ampicillin, penicillin or amoxicillin. How penicillins help your patient? Oh, penicillins are very good for urinary tract infections, STDs or sexually transmitted diseases. And also penicillin is great to fight off pneumonia. How they harm your patient. What is the number one thing you want to know about a patient before you give them a penicillin? What do you think? It is to check for allergies. You have to ask that patient, are you allergic to penicillin? Because if they are, we don't want to give them penicillin. Let me ask you this. What are the signs of an allergic reaction? If a patient is given penicillin and they start to become allergic, 
what are you going to see? You're going to see hives, itching, rash, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to have some swelling, difficulty breathing. These are the signs of the allergic reaction. So if a patient is having these signs in front of you, you've given them penicillin, they're starting to have anaphylactic shock, what are you going to give them? What is the antidote for a penicillin allergic reaction? It is epinephrine. I want you all to know epinephrine is the medication of choice for your NCLEX exam. All right. Now, before I go, I got to ask this about penicillin. Is it safe to give during pregnancy? What say if you guys? The correct answer is yes. This is our pregnancy safe, breastfeeding safe antibiotic. It's always going to be penicillin. Penicillin as your first choice if the patient doesn't have any allergies. Now, I want to move on to the next medication class, which are the tetracyclines. Patients can get tetracyclines if they are allergic to penicillin because they kind of treat the same things. But let's start by the examples of a tetracycline. They are doxycycline, minocycline. So medications that have the cycline at the stem are going to fall into this class. Like I said, tetracyclines treat the same things as your penicillins. So we're going to put down how they help your patient, urinary tract infections, STDs, pneumonia, and I also want you to add acne. Tetracyclines are given to help fight off teenage acne. How they harm your patients, this is important. Tetracyclines are nephrotoxic, which you guys know. They are also phototoxic. What does phototoxic mean? When a client is taking a medication that causes phototoxicity, it is going to cause damage when the patient is in the sun. So direct sunlight will cause damage. They'll be sensitive. To, and this is by way of the skin, of course. They're going to have a severe sun sensitivity because of that phototoxicity. And then tetracyclines are also hepatotoxic. What does it mean if a medication is hepatotoxic? Where does it cause damage to? That's right, it's going to cause damage to your liver. Liver, liver, liver. All right, the children precaution for tetracyclines is that for children under the age of 12, tetracyclines can stain the teeth. They can cause the teeth to present as a silver or a black color. The food interactions that will cause tetracyclines to become ineffective here they are. They are milk, iron, calcium supplements, and antacids. You don't want to take tetracyclines with any of these kinds of foods or medications. Final question here before we do a practice question. Can you give tetracyclines to a woman who is pregnant or breastfeeding? What say if you guys? The correct answer is no, you don't want to do that. Okay, so that is a rundown of aminoglycosides, penicillins, tetracyclines, and your major NCLEX points. Now, let's apply what we just studied to some practice questions. You can take a minute to do them by yourself, or I'm going to get started right now with them. Number one says, a client is scheduled to receive clindamycin at 9 a.m. At which time should the trough level be drawn? Okay. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Here are the choices. One, 7.30. Two, 
a.m. 3, 8.45 or 4, 9 a.m. Which time should that trough level be drawn? The correct answer is number three. It is going to be 8.45 a.m. because this is the closest time to when that medication is due. So you want to catch it at the time. And remember, it may take a while for you to draw your client's blood. So you want to get started and give yourself, depending on your skill level, you know how long it will take you to draw the blood. You want to catch it right before that, um, that medication is due. And remember, when we're doing NCLEX questions, we want to look at the four choices that were given and pick the best one from which we are given. Let's go on to the next one. Two. A teenage client has been prescribed a tetracycline for moderate acne. Which of the following statements is the highest priority in the client education about the medication? Number one, use sunscreen when you are exposed to direct sunlight. Two, monitor the teeth for color changes. Three, report any signs of hearing loss to the healthcare provider or four, reduce the amount of fat in your diet to decrease the presence of ketones. Hmm. Now, I love this question because this is a perfect example of how strategies will not work for NCLEX. You have to know about the subject. You have to know about the content in order to get the answer correct. And the correct answer is number one, Use sunscreen when you are exposed to direct sunlight. You guys are able to answer this question because you know tetracyclines cause photosensitivity. This is how we get NCLEX passed. We study the core content so that we're able to use our knowledge. We're able to use our knowledge to answer the questions appropriately. There's no tips and there's no tricks for nursing education. You have to know it. The third question says, a nurse is caring for an elderly client who has pneumonia. The healthcare provider prescribes penicillin PO for 14 days. When the nurse asks the client if she has a penicillin allergy, the client states she does not know as she has never taken the medication. Which of the following is the best response by the nurse? Okay, here are our choices. Number one, I will administer this medication and stay with you for monitoring after you take it. Two, I will hold the medication and clarify the order with the healthcare provider. Three, I will notify the healthcare provider and suggest a different antibiotic. Four, I will notify the pharmacist and discuss other alternatives. So the correct answer here, and let me just break out the scenario again. You have an elderly client, they're diagnosed with pneumonia. They're diagnosed with pneumonia. The doctor prescribes penicillin. So the nurse says, have you ever had a penicillin allergy? And the patient says, I don't know. I've never taken penicillin before. So in this situation, what is the best response by the nurse? It is number one. I will administer this medication and stay with you for monitoring after you take it. All right. This is what you do. If it's no different if a client has been prescribed um, blood, right? If a patient says, I've never had blood before. You know, the nurse is not going to say, well, let me go call the doctor and clarify this order. There's nothing to clarify. Blood was ordered. There's nothing to clarify here. Penicillin was ordered. The patient has never had it before. So what is the best response by the nurse? It is to give the medication, carry out the order, and stay with the patient for monitoring. And remember, we stay with the patient, we monitor, 
with them in the room present for 15 minutes. And then we continue to monitor them for a full 30 minutes, taking vital signs, making sure everything is okay. But we certainly do not need to call the healthcare provider to clarify the order. It's already clear. And we would not be appropriate to suggest a, a different antibiotic. That would be appropriate if there was a penicillin allergy. But as of yet, we don't know. And also the pharmacist, he doesn't have anything to do with it at this time. Right. So I want you guys to think about think about your scope of practice and what you can do as the nurse when you're facilitating medication administration. All right. So challenging questions, I know, but they're used to help you identify weak areas so that during this process, you know what to study. All right. That's antibiotic overview. Let's move on. Hey everyone, my name is Rashina Cheatham and I recently took the NCLEX PN and I was successful. I passed my test. Thanks to Remar Nursing, Mark and Regina, they are amazing. Um, the biggest thing I like with their program is that they are spiritually based. Um, and since I believe that with God, all things are possible and so do they, I knew that that was the right program for me right off the bat. So with this program, um, I got my virtual trainer and my quick facts book, and I used it diligently for about a month straight, really. I mean, I subscribed for three months, but for about a month straight, I used this program. I mean, I was in my book like no other. I was writing, I was taking notes, I was listening. I mean, I was really doing what I needed to do. Also with the quick facts, it was like my Bible. I took it everywhere I went, um, and it paid off. I was successful. Um, with the full 145, but I made it, I passed, and I was a repeat test taker. I took it in November. I had a lot of things going on, and I think I just wasn't focused, but when I really buckled down, I got the Remar review and the quick facts. I was determined, and with the encouragement of Regina and Mark, um, I just, words can't describe how happy I am and how thankful I am, and how I just know now that life will, will is about to change. And I'm just, I'm forever grateful for that. Um, so I just encourage every nurse that has taken a test, maybe never taken a test, um, or going to be taking a test, just know that you can, you will, and you must pass, pass the NCLEX. And um, it's worth investing in this, in the, into this uh, review. Because when I tell you it's amazing, I mean, I felt so confident. I felt like I just, I knew I could do it. I mean, it's just, I can't even describe it. Just, I mean, it's worth it. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I can, I will, and I did pass the NCLEX. You're tired of not having your nursing license. You're tired of studying every day and not really making progress. This NCLEX virtual trainer will be the solution to those problems, right? And it may not be for everybody, but if you are at a point where you're just like, ah, I just want to get this over with, uh, the lectures made sense to me today, I learned a lot from Regina, then this is the time, this is your opportunity to get that started right now, right now, right now. I want you guys to have your, I want you guys to have your nursing license. When you guys have success, then uh, honestly, Mark and I have success. Team Remar has success. Um, so that's what I want for you is independence day. I want you to be independent as a nurse. I want you to be able to go to different States and travel. Uh, I want you to be able to have the freedom, the real freedom of not having to study, not having to, you know, work at a job that you're not getting paid for enough. Um, I, I actually, I am super excited about this week because I'm actually taking a vacation, which I, I hardly ever do. So I will be taking you guys to my vacation this year, which is going to be in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. So you guys, you guys will be seeing me there enjoying myself. And I think that's what, you know, you have to be able to do when you become a nurse. You have to be able to step back 
from the profession and just relax. And so I want that for you guys. I want you guys to be able to take vacations and, um, you know, just live your life to the fullest. And so getting your nursing license is a big part of that journey for you guys. So uh, this is your opportunity. We spent two hours today. We spent two hours today studying, guys. So if I can do it and you can do it with me, then I know you can do it with me inside of the virtual trainer. I know you guys can do it with me inside of the virtual trainer. So get in there. Do what you need to do. You can, you will, you must pass NCLEX. Don't forget, don't forget that I need you guys to subscribe to the channel. I need you guys to like the page as well so that you can stay connected. Was getting ready for work and listen to the entire live. Love that. <laughs> stay connected, guys. You can, you will, you must pass NCLEX. Let's go.